Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group and your host for today's show called Crossing Bridges, which is brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. We call ourselves Women Lead TV. We talk about important issues in business. As an executive director on the John Maxwell team, I love being able to talk about leadership and sales, and this particular show is designed for women in business. Crossing Bridges is about us acknowledging steps we had to take to get from where we are to where we want to be. We talk about things we, we were challenged by and how we conquered it. I'm excited to introduce you to our guest today, Martha, and I'm going to have Martha pronounce her last name because I don't want to mess it up. Martha, I'm so happy you said yes today. Thank you, Michelle. Tell us how to pronounce your last name. Sufnarowski. Sufnarowski. Twelve little letters. <laughs> you can just call me Martha. I'm going to just call you Martha. Thank you so much You're for welcome. being here today. My pleasure. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. Martha has such a vast experience. Seems like typically it's been the, uh, all around women in business. That is correct. And right now, Martha, how you and I met was because of membership at Hera Hub, yep. which is, this one's in Irvine. Yep. We love Hera, Hera yes, Hub, and you're going to talk a little bit more about that today. I'd love to. But let's start off by talking about bridges that you had mm -hmm. to cross, and, and, and you, you know, you've been involved with SCORE, and mm -hmm. you've got lots. So yep. let's start off with the audience understanding okay. more about your connections yep. with women in business. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I have spent my entire career in some way in service to women. Yeah. I have been a person who worked at the uh, Women's Bureau in the U.S. Department of Labor. I worked at the Women's Rights National Historical Park in New York. Mm. I was a director at an organization called Women in Community Service, and I founded a documentary company to do programs about women in economic development communities. All about women. All about women. Why is that? What? What? Why did you decide that that was your focus? What was it about women in business that? intrigued you? Um, I think that even though I grew up in a family that supported women mm, and good. I mm -hmm. was always the expectation I would go to school, get educated, get out, get a job, be successful, I realized when I went outside of my um, family that the uh, environment and the culture wasn't always fun friendly to women. Mm. Uh, whether it be that we were moms trying to balance raising children with careers mm -hmm. or whether we weren't getting the same money and opportunities or literal opportunities through glass ceilings and corporations. They just weren't handing out as many roles to women in the higher echelon. So I think I gravitated toward finding um, a niche in solutions to making sure that women who are sometimes more skilled and more educated mm -hmm. than our male counterparts, that mm -hmm. we get the jobs that we really want and will be make us successful and happy. Interesting. So mm -hmm. thank you for your commitment to women in business. I have some statistics that I yes. ran across that I wanted to share. Yep. So this is a good news. 40% of businesses in the U.S. are owned by women. Mm -hmm. 40%. And growing every year. See, that's a lot. That's so a lot. So good for us. Yep. And this is interesting. This is really interesting. Private tech companies led by women have 35% higher ROI than men. That's a yay for us. <laughs> yes. 35% yep. higher ROI. That's an interesting fact. Yep. Now, also, I don't know if this is, it's interesting. Venture, venture capital, mm. we only have 7% mm -hmm. from venture capital. Right. So that's, I'm, I'm curious your perspective on all yep. these. And now here's one on happiness. Yep. Happiness as a business owner, people tend to range from 8 to 10 on a happiness level, 10 being high. Mm -hmm. And for only 35% of women businesses said they were happy compared to 38% for men. So mm -hmm. the women seem to be less happy than men. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering about that. So you've studied this mm -hmm. and been involved with it all your life. Yep. I'd love for us to have a dialogue about that. I'm sure, sure. our audience is curious about that. Yep. And one thing that I wonder, Martha, is we are so productive. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's admit yeah. that as women, we are multitaskers. We, we are. know how to get it done. I agree. Right? Yes. But I'm wondering if yes. part of that might be why maybe we're not as happy because we're so busy doing so much. Maybe. So I'm going to just let you okay. tell, what do you, what's your perspective okay. on that? Well, let me just tell you a little bit about <laughs> my journey into a more happy and fulfilling uh, role as a business owner. Okay. Um, I moved into California from the East Coast in 2002 Okay. because my husband got a promotion Okay. Mm -hmm. and I was the mom of preschoolers. Oh, wow. And so we packed up and I became the trailing wife. Okay. I arrived in California <laughs> um, Tired. Uh-huh. Right. Overweight. Okay. And mad. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> not happy. Right. It was not happy. I mean, I had left all my friends and family uh, back home, and I had to find my niche. So I actually joined the YMCA for the benefit of my children. But while I was there, a group of women approached me and said, hey, would you like to join our triathlon club? And I said, what? And I laughed <laughs> because I thought triathlon was only for very fit women and it was a very long distance. And they said, no, we're mostly a social club. We all have young kids. Many of us work. And this is our way to kind of connect um, and kind of feed our souls. So I didn't believe them, but I joined them anyway. Nice. Right. Yeah, nice. Said, nice. Okay, I'm here. I need friends. Let's go. This sounds like a bridge that you crossed. It was a very big bridge because I wasn't uh, someone who was physically active or physically fit. So I was very intimidated mm -hmm. by this new group of women, mm -hmm. even though I had been surrounded by women business owners mm -hmm. uh, for a very long time. But what I found when I did triathlon is that it was, it was very much like a business. You had to set goals, you had to develop a plan, you had to figure out how to get it done with many different challenges kind of pulling at you. And at the end though, no matter what, if you kept pursuing your goal, you crossed a finish line, they gave you a medal, okay. and your, your life basically changes at that point. Oh, because why is that? Because you conquered? Exactly. And I think so much of the work we do as women in our homes is never ending. It mm. just seems like once you finish one mm. task, another one is there. Mm -hmm. And you don't get that same sense of satisfaction. Also, mm. in our general lives, we do things for others. When you enter a sport, and especially an individual sport like running or triathlon, you have to do it. No one's going to do it for you. Right. There's real. There's a team. There might be a team around you, but there's no teammates to hand off the ball to. Right. It's all you. So when you cross that finish line, the level of satisfaction and happiness you get crossing that finish line is something that no one can take away from you. I did it. Yes, uh, I did it. Uh -huh. And you look at that medal, and again, no matter what other things go on in your life, you can come back to that moment and kind mm -hmm. of relive it and know that you have the resolve inside of you to do that. Then maybe you can cross over other bridges in your life, use that same resolve that you found in sports and allow it to have you be successful in other parts of your life. So I took I that, that opportunity when I realized that these women were not only um, committed to this sport, but committed to each other, mm -hmm. I looked for all women's uh, teams. Okay. And I didn't find any. Uh-oh. And so I created one. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I haven't been an athlete Make my a whole way, life. Find a way, I, woman. I, I do, right. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a coach. Uh, right. officially, but I'm not finding any female coaches and I'm not finding what I want. So let me take this newfound passion that I have and see if I can create a community of women that transcend triathlon, like help each other from all walks of life, all fitness abilities, and mostly we're a team that supports each other while we happen to do triathlon there training. There is, it happens to do that. You know, I love I that. Like. You know, you and I didn't talk about that, but I can so relate because for the last seven years I've done the, I did the Avon walk, 39 right. mile walk, and the Susan Coleman 60 awesome. mile walk. And what Amazing. I noticed is how I transferred the experiences with mm -hmm. that into work. Exactly. Climbing the hill was yep. hard, <laughs> but once you get to the top, right. you could see where you came from right. and you could see a new view. Right. And in business, if you keep putting your, foot to the pedal, put right. the pedal to the metal, right. then you get to enjoy yep. the pearls right. of all that you, uh, you know, worked on. Right. It's hard and it's worth it. Right. So that's what you yeah. experienced. Well, just like in business, it's, uh, it's true of any sport. If you want to train well and right. not necessarily hard, right? Work right. smarter, not harder. Right. And you want to make sure that the, the time you use is very productive, you know? And you can sort of map out a training plan and life gets in the way, right. and your goal turns out to be different, and uh -huh. all those are applicable in business. You have to right. learn to readjust and pivot. Um, right. And I think, though, for a lot of women, in the business community, we're very happy. We can make things happen. We mm -hmm. can sort of set our own course, especially if we own our businesses. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other things we're dealing with in life. Maybe we're caretakers for our parents. Right, you mentioned that. Maybe we're caretakers for children. Right, Maybe Sometimes we're both. caretakers for both. At the same time. That's right, that's right. So it, as supportive as husbands can be, and right. many of them are, right. um, <laughs> it, somehow uh, mentally we take on the burdens of making sure that ship stays on the ocean, that train stays on the track, mm -hmm. and that everyone else is happy. And mm -hmm. I think that that does impact our happiness as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why we see that when we survey women, when we say, are you happy in business? Mm. Um, I think women are happy to own their own businesses, right. but the buck stops here. There's a like, lot that goes along with right. it. Right. Women yeah. that are employees can take time off with pay. Right. 
they can uh, send their auto email to someone else in the office. <laughs> exactly. Um, delegate more. We can delegate more. <laughs> we often have teams around us right. um, that are going to be there no matter what. We have an right. HR department, an IT department. Right. When you own your own business, you got to do it all. You got to do it all. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think that that okay. can make you unhappy in the moment, even though your overall happiness as a business owner, I think, is greater. Okay. That was such a great discussion on that. That was awesome. Thanks. I want to uh, pivot a little bit. Yep. Because you talked about passion. Yep. And we are told when you're building a business, yep. find your passion. Right. <laughs> right. And and you said, you know, there are some pluses and maybe some minuses to that. Can right. you talk to that? Sure. So I've had this newfound passion of triathlon uh -huh. and I wanted to establish it as a business. Um, and I thought it would be very seamless. I was, I'm passionate about this, right. I know how to do it. I've heard feedback from women of what they wanted. And in my first uh, ever um, opening of the, my doors, I had 15 women apply uh, wow. and want to do triathlon with me. I wow. thought, this is going to be awesome. Exactly. This is easy piece this of case. This is easy, easy piece of case. <laughs> but in the first year then, I had 150. Oh, dear. So it went from 15 to 150. Wow. And I was like, woohoo, we're cooking with gas now. But... Uh -oh. When you become the leader of the team uh -huh. as opposed to a member of the team, <laughs> it's very different. And In you're what dealing, way? Well, first of all, you have to wrangle women who have come to this sport usually being the uh, shot makers in their own lives. They are mm -hmm. business owners, mm -hmm. CEOs, high-level executives, um, and they want to do triathlon, and they're used to running their own show. Okay. <laughs> and now they have to be a member in your uh. show. That's the biggest one that we have to transition to. Um, and many of them are, come in and they do understand, like now they're the member of the team. But also because the women that choose to do this sport are generally type A personalities. Right, right, right. They right. expect a high level of um, service from you. And so you really have to now up your game and be like, oh, we're not just putting out a plan and going out and doing this together. Right. And the other thing too is you lose your training partners because oh. now that you're the coach, the owner, the founder, oh. the leader, oh. it's not it's lonely a at the top. It's sometimes. lonely at the top. I have to tell you, yes. And I think that that's something that's very surprising for women. When we create our own businesses, we think we'll create a community for ourselves, but there still is that divide between, mm -hmm. you know, managers and employees, mm -hmm, leaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, and people that are going to follow, and not everyone's happy all the time. No. So that's a good point. Yeah. And you know what? That's a great connection yep. to Hera. House. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, how so, do I get there? Yeah. So, yeah. let's talk. Why don't you share a little bit about what is Hera? Perfect. Hub? And then what's the value? Because you said, yeah. you know, we don't want to work alone, nope. all that. So okay. let's talk a so little bit about Her that. Hub is a co-working space, basically a three-in-one, as we call it. It is spa-inspired workspace. Yeah, that's a good description. Focused on women. It's a beautiful environment, but we do three things there. We provide a co-working space for women to come if they don't want to work uh, independently or mm -hmm. in their homes or offices or don't want to meet in Starbucks anymore right. for every meeting. Exactly, yeah. We also have meeting spaces you can rent on an hourly basis, mm -hmm. and then we have have, excuse me, we have individual offices that you could rent on a monthly basis mm -hmm. if you want to set up your business there. But the most important thing about Hera Hub is that it is a business accelerator for women. Right. And what I mean by that is people like you yeah. provide guru hours right, right, right. where you say, I will sit here for two hours, ladies, and whatever questions you have about sales and my right. expertise, mm -hmm. I will provide to you. We have business booster workshops every week. We have lunch and learns. We have wellness boosters where we are uh, workshops about how to take care of yourself and this is all in a community of other women either building or um, expanding their own businesses exactly so they yeah. get it they understand what it's mm -hmm. like to be the leader they understand right. what it's like to need support and help right. and when I owned my own business and I called someone for help on my website or IT or legal advice or accounting I would spend a lot of money right. and sometimes too much time on the phone right, right. Um, getting that advice Hera Hub has those gurus like you right. who are willing to donate their services to other women building their business. Mm -hmm. That's worth its weight in gold. It is. You know what? It is such a community and it yep. does address the challenges of being a women business or a business owner in, in any way. Period. But, but we love Hera Hub and it is so beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, I love it. I love being yeah. able to have the workspace to conduct the workshops. Exactly. And be able to go in there and work and have conversations and really yep. learn what other people are working on yep. and how we can help. Right. And I think really we as right. women, we really are willing to help a lot. Right, exactly. So can you believe it? We're almost out of time. Okay. So well, what, what's, what's the fast. last thing that you want to be able to share with the audience? to know about you, Martha, the projects that you're working on? Yep, I think that any 
challenge in front of you is not insurmountable if you find the right people to help you and the build right the right people. team, the okay. right people. Okay. And so many of us don't always find the right people right. that if you can rely on businesses like Harahub, or we didn't really touch on this, but SCORE or right. other places that offer free mentoring, yes. free workshops for, to, for women to build their business, but most importantly, find other women who get the challenges you're facing, right. connect with them, and it will make the, the hard parts a lot easier, mm -hmm. and you will probably more, be more successful and productive too. So okay. um, yeah, so that this new uh, phase of my life where I'm working at Harahub to build this business right. accelerator and these programs is uh, just a connection of all the stuff I've done with women throughout my career. So I love it. Awesome. Well, we're happy Thanks. to have you as an accelerator for Harahub. Thank I'm you. I'm happy to have you now, and the audience is happy to have you because you've given some really good ideas. I love Great. what we talk about with with happiness and all the things that we do and, and the fact that we need to embrace each other. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is we don't need to make it hard. We can use the resources that are available to us yeah. and, and we can all benefit from that. So thank you so much for tuning in to Crossing Bridges on Women Lead TV brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And we'll see you again on the next segment.